Video games are quickly becoming the world's largest form of media and entertainment, outperforming both the global music and movie industries combined. But it is not an industry without issues. Loot boxes, a term used to describe randomized reward packages in games, have become a mainstay in modern gaming. But loot boxes may in fact be a form of gambling designed to addict players to convince them to spend more and more money on their game of choice. Some of the games that have featured loot boxes and other examples of microtransactions include all of EA's major sports titles including the FIFA, Madden and NB2K franchises, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Overwatch, Destiny, Grand Theft Auto 5, the Call of Duty franchise, Halo 5, Fortnite and more. Now microtransactions and loot boxes are not a new phenomenon in gaming. They first came to prominence in the mobile gaming market and later became commonplace in sports titles like FIFA. But the tipping point came in 2017 with the release of a game called Star Wars Battlefront 2, but when the game was finally released in November 2017, players found that the game's multiplayer progression system had been designed entirely around loot boxes. Now to understand why this is such a big issue, it's important to understand how most multiplayer progression systems work. In a competitive shooter such as Battlefront or Call of Duty, a player joins a match and scores points by completing objectives, defeating enemy players and so on. The player usually then earns what is referred to as experience points, and when a player earns enough points they are typically rewarded by being able to unlock new equipment and abilities or cosmetic items, something that is in the desires of every player as it further enhances their gameplay experience. The more a player advances through the progression system, the better the rewards are, and the more skilled the players are, the faster they advance. So players who are more invested in the game are rewarded in a reasonable way. And this is where the issue of loot boxes comes in, as it removes all of this in favour of an RNG, or random number generator, system. Meaning your progression in the game is entirely based on luck. This was already enough to upset fans, but what made it more insulting was that some of the rewards contained in the loot boxes were much better than others, leading to a very unbalanced gameplay experience where those individuals who had gotten lucky had a clear advantage over others. And the cherry on top of all of this was the fact that the game allowed players to spend real world money in order to purchase the loot boxes in bulk, while the in-game progression system to earn loot boxes without spending money had been made deliberately slow, with some estimates suggesting that it would take up to 20 hours of gameplay to unlock a single character in a game that had 24 characters at launch. This led to criticisms that the game was made pay to win, meaning that the developers had deliberately compromised the balance and progression of their game in order to, in to incentivize the purchasing of loot boxes using real world money. The backlash to this title became so intense that it became the first landmark title to draw the attention of governments around the world, as the practice of spending real world money for randomized rewards of varying value closely resembles gambling in a game with an age rating of 16. Belgium declared EA's loot boxes as gambling, while in Hawaii State Senator Chris Lee described them as predatory tactics and that EA was effectively selling a Star Wars themed casino aimed at children during a press release. So all of this brings us to a question, are loot boxes really a form of gambling? Now the exact answer to that depends on the gambling laws specific to your country, and EA insisted on multiple occasions that they are not, going so far as to argue in a hearing in the United Kingdom's parliament that loot boxes are quite ethical and that we like to think of them as surprise mechanics, not gambling. This is also a good time to note that in 2019, EA made approximately $1.49 billion in revenue from their ultimate team platform across all their sports titles alone. Regardless of where EA and different governments stand on the issue of loot boxes, we can look at how loot boxes for work from a psychological perspective. Loot boxes have been compared to Skinner boxes, referring to studies made by behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner. In a Skinner box, an animal is conditioned to repeat a specific task in exchange for a reward. In his studies, Skinner found that if an animal received a reward every time, it would eventually get bored and stop performing the task. However, if the animal only received a reward some of the time, it would perform the task indefinitely in the hopes of receiving one. And this same behavior can be found in humans. When we receive a reward, dopamine, the chemical that elicits feelings of happiness, gets released in our brains. If we receive rewards too often though, our brains produce less dopamine, which is why we see diminishing returns in repeating the same tasks over and over. If we only get rewards some of the time though, our brains maintain that level of dopamine. This is why the anticipation of a rare reward, 
such as winning a gambling or opening a loot box, can give people such a thrill and why it can be so addicting. The sense of hype, anticipation and excitement is also why a lot of gambling makes for a tense but exciting spectator sport. Games like slot machines take their time with each spin, leaving you guessing at where each wheel will land. Compare this to the opening animations that play every time you purchase a loot box in a recent video game, and you will start to notice a lot of similarities. The issue that loot boxes present should then become pretty self-explanatory, when you remember that many of the titles that loot boxes are present in are marketed to minors. Stories like these have become quite common to hear in the last few years, since loot boxes have surged in popularity. These practices are unethical and illegal in many countries, but since video games are still not presently in the cultural zeitgeist of several countries, they may continue to go unchecked.